We're pleased to be joined once again by Kevin O'Toole, Chairman of the Board of Commissioners, the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, and also a former State Senator in New Jersey. Good to see you, Kevin. Good seeing you, Steve. How are we doing? We're doing great. Listen, beyond talking policy about transportation and other issues with the Port Authority, this focus of this segment, the focus of this segment is on a column you wrote for NJ.com. Um, it's time to deliver on the promise of America that talked about discrimination against Asian Americans that you know very well. Um, by the way, by way of background, tell folks about your mom and your dad and sure. your background. Sure. My mom was born in North Korea and had to, uh, she was um, forced to flee uh, back in the 50s. Uh, she lost a couple of brothers in the, the conflict. The North Korean soldiers had done some terrible things, so they left. She went over to the South Korean border after a couple of months of flight. She worked for the South Korean government, washing clothes and other manual labor things. And she met my dad, an American GI, and they had a relationship. He re-enlisted, came back to South Korea and brought her over to the States in 1957. So as it relates to discrimination against the Asian American community, this matter is on a personal as well as a policy and a societal level to you. You've experienced it very directly. More specifically, 2007 in a Senate race, you said in this article, the race card was played against you. Talk about it. Yeah, it was one of those, you know, the, uh, the opponent we were running against, he, uh, among other things, um, you know, he was uh, making the comment that I didn't reflect the population because, you know, I was, whether it was Chinese or Korean, they weren't really sure what it was at the time. Um, they had, I guess, contemplated actually, you know, as he, in his words, the campaign manager jauntising my face just a little more to give the full context. They figured if they could just race bait it and show everybody that I was not really, you know, an Irish or Italian or, 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 or a more Americanized, perhaps I could lose some of my footing in the, uh, in the race. And that's happened before. And listen, politics is, you know, it's a tough sport. It's, uh, you know, you get punched in the face every once in a while. But that was, you know, full blown. You know, this was in your face. He is not an American. He happens to be Korean or, or Chinese or whatever it is. And they thought that would like, that I would lose support because of that, which didn't happen. We ended up winning rather handily. But, but Kevin, your voice matters uh, a lot. And this is why under this category of New Jersey leaders who matter, we're having this discussion with you. But it also matters because you've talked in this piece that you wrote uh, for NJ.com about COVID and its impact ex exacerbating, if you will, accelerating and making worse discrimination against Asian Americans. So over the COVID year, from what I'm told, actually hate crimes have gone down 6%, but uh, hate crimes against Asians have increased over 150, 160%. Isn't that, it's astonishing. You know, places in the cities, you know, New York City in particular, up 223%. Uh, in New Jersey, it ranks like seventh or eighth in terms of hate crimes against Asians in the last year. You go to Vancouver, it's up 717%. Uh, and even though the Asian population in Vancouver is over 40%, it's just astonishing that we've seen in the United States over 6,000 hate crimes against Asians in the last year. And it doesn't seem like it's slowing down, it's only getting worse. What do we need to do, Kevin? Well, I mean, first of all, you need to speak out and having this conversation is very helpful. I felt compelled to write something about it. Uh, and you need other uh, officials to start talking about. This is a hate crime. We've got to recognize it. You have to have support groups for the folks who are going through this. But typically, you know, growing up in a, in a Korean household, the Asian Americans who are just brought over here, they don't want to complain. They don't want to go to the police. They don't want to. And this is largely an underreported crime because Asians, my experience, Steve, is that they will not go to the police and they kind of live with it, whether it's a harassment, whether it's an assault, whether it's a break in into a business. Um, they have kind of just tolerated, but it seems this year now, I think with some of the education, Steve, you're seeing some of the Asian victims are now speaking out. You're seeing some bystanders who are now trying to stop some of it. I think that's part of the education. Bystanders, if they're seeing, like in San Francisco, two grandmothers were knifed sitting out waiting for a bus. It's just astonishing. And now bystanders trying to help them and stop, but you're seeing some folks who are um, trying to be proactive about it. Training in the workforce, training in our society, training in our schools, uh, education, uh, what we should do, what we shouldn't do. And frankly, look, it got to the tipping point, whether last year with Floyd and this year with the Asian hate, our society is just so filled with hate and it's frustration. I think COVID kind of brings us to a boiling point and, it, and it's got to escape somewhere, Steve. And it seems like the easy part of the last year has been the Asian American community. But the other thing, Kevin, the, the title of this, and I don't know whether you or the folks at NJ.com figured out the, the headline, but it's, it's time to deliver on the promise of America. And it starts out, let's just listen to this. I'm not going to read the whole thing, just this section. 
when my children were born a generation ago, I envisioned they would grow up in a better world than I had. It is a universal hope of parents that the societal failures of the past be corrected before their children experience discrimination potentially and potentially hate-filled violence. Sadly, my children have not inherited such a world. This is personal. Yeah, so listen, when we moved into uh, the house my parents live in now, literally three of the relatives, uh, they put up for sale signs, literally right around our house. And they said, we're moving out. And yeah, they did. 30 years later, they moved out. Once we got to know them, you know, we looked different. You know, the kids were, you know, crazy, whatever, half Asian, half Irish. Um, and there wasn't really much of a tolerance. My daughter, fast forward, when she was five, she came home very angry with her parents. And she folds her arms and she goes, I'm really mad at you, mom and dad. She goes, you never told me I was Chinese. I said, well, you're not Chinese, right? I said, you're Korean, you're, you're French, you're Polish, you're Irish. She goes, well, one of the classmates told me, she called me a chink and says, I'm, I'm Chinese. I said, well, you're not Chinese, so get over it. But you saw some of that, you know, percolate. This is in kindergarten. So listen, the reality five is- Five years old, six five, years old, Kevin. Five. Uh, you know, and, and listen, so you have to grow a thick skin in some respects, but you have to have this- understanding that we need to speak out. We need to have a, a tolerance. We need to talk to the folks that there is a problem. If you recognize a hate problem, speak out about it. Don't just go into your shell and just retreat. Uh, and if you see it at, in a place of employment, report it. If you see someone being victimized uh, physically, you have to kind of intercede without hurting yourself. You got to do something about it. We as a nation society, Steve, we can't tolerate racism anymore. It's chewed us up as a society for the last 40 years. You know, in a couple of minutes that we have left, also, at the Port Authority, there have been incidents involving your employees who happen to be Asian American, correct? It's Yeah, listen, on the premises, they were leaving work or coming to work, and a couple of the uh, employees, Asian Americans, were assaulted. And listen, we have, uh, the police force has done a great job. We're now monitoring those folks. We're doing a buddy system where we have to. And we're and those people who are responsible, Steve, we are, help we are holding them to the highest order, whether we're prosecuting them to the fullest and holding them responsible. Uh, it's something we're very vigilant about, very conscious about. Like I said, in New York City, there's been a surge of 223% increase in hate crimes against Asians in the last year. It's just, Those numbers are astonishing. Let me ask you this. I'm curious. You understand politics more than most. You understand government and, and people, right? You've had to interact and navigate all kinds of difficult situations. People watching this right now, Kevin, who happen not to be Asian American um, or or just let's just say that they come from other places um, and different experiences. To what degree do you genuinely believe that people who are not experiencing something personally, directly themselves, their family members, their children, that they have the capacity to actually care deeply about others who are suffering? As long as my life's good, you get where I'm coming from? Yeah, so I, I mean, there's a segment of the population that will just be worried about their own business. But Steve, I really think most people are good. I think most people in their heart really have this well of compassion and they want to have, uh, you know, what's good for the human, uh, their, their fellow human being. But some of them just aren't aware because they haven't seen it. Now you're seeing the press and media, social media is now playing this out. I think some of the folks in our community just didn't realize how prolific and prominent and how damaging this hate, this beatdown, this harassment against Asian Americans. It's now becoming, now people are talking about it. There's support groups, there's counseling groups, there's people who are saying, we're not gonna tolerate it. There's websites, there's leaders of our community, elected officials are standing up and saying, this can't be done, we can't condone this activity anymore. So you're seeing some of those people take note of it and you're seeing the, the support groups that are out there, which I think is really necessary. But I think most people really care and they wouldn't tolerate it. By the way, go on nj.com to find uh, Kevin O'Toole's article, it's time to deliver on the promise of America, uh, Kevin O'Toole, who was a former state senator, the only Asian American to serve in the Senate, the only Asian American to be the chairman, uh, the chairperson of the Board Authorities Board of Commissioners, uh, a New Jersey leader who matters. Kevin, thank you so much. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate the conversation. Thank you. I'm Steve Adubato. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.